and that was the first house that I lived in. But it was a pit village. Nothing but a pit village. And this is where the pits used to be over here. Now coming into another little village of Merton. Guess what? It had its own colliery pit as well. Unbelievable just how much industry there was in this area with the collieries. But it was Easington Colliery that uh, had the horrendous disaster in the early 50s. Oh my god! Just back there, there's an old building and I've just remembered back in the day when I was a kid at Christmas with the police they used to have Christmas parties for the kids get them all together my god ah! and I can only remember ever going to one and it was there it was in the old village hall there at Merton and I got a box with metal puzzles in where you had to try and take them apart. Bloody hell fire. That's nuts remembering that. I can even remember inside your Father Christmas and your parents had, had wrapped up a, a gift that they gave to you then. Yeah, I got the metal puzzles. We're now on the outskirts of Seam. And we're going to be heading down to the sea front. Now, Seam was a harbour, but also in the centre of Durham City there is a horse on a plinth, and that's in another story. But the guy who is depicted on that plinth was also responsible for establishing Seam Harbour. He tried to get up into Sunderland and to do a lot up in Sunderland because it's a massive great port and they couldn't do it. And so he made Seam Harbour where the, he could get the coal from the coal fields and he could transport it round the world from there himself. On the left there is the police station. But that's the new police station. The old police station is further down here. Now, believe it or not, we're going to go and see Tommy in a minute, but that building on the left there, that is the old police station. And it's where my grandfather, my dad's dad, worked out of, but also where my dad worked out of. See, there's no entry, but I didn't know. So that over there is the harbour and the guy who was on the plinth on his horse in the centre of Durham city was responsible for establishing the harbour so that the coal could be transported from the Durham coal fields around the world. But also something else. This was the area during World War II where the bombers used to come in. The bombers used to come in across Seam. 
there was a munitions factory at Bertley and they also wanted to bomb the port of Sunderland and Newcastle but my father lived here as a young boy and we're going to go and see if I can find his house but he relates the story where when the bombers had finished doing their bit inland they came back out to oversee them and they would straff the streets to get rid of the ammunition so that they were lighter for flying back and that could well be the reason for Tommy now Tommy himself in his position speaks a thousand words I don't think anything needs to be said Now just a little bit further out of Seam as we head north towards Sunderland you see those cliffs over there well back in the early 60s there was a family got caught out by the tide and they couldn't get back in they were playing on the cliffs they got stuck and my dad went and rescued them he abseiled down from the top and brought them back up to safety. He got an award for that. In fact, funnily enough, when my father retired, he was the most decorated award policeman in County Durham with the certificates he'd got from saving people as well as animals. But it was on those cliffs there. So you can imagine the skies here oversee them full of German bombers coming in to try and destroy the munitions factories one of which was at Bertley which isn't too far from here it must have been her he was only a young boy he was born in 1935 so he was only four when it started and the story goes that he got that scared, they moved him to Durham City at Framugat Moor. Where he went to live with his Aunt Maggie. And where they had to sleep head to toe in the bed because there was that many kids. And it was up here where my dad lived. And the air raid shelter was at the bottom of the garden. He lived at the second house down. And in the bottom of that garden is where they would run to the air raid shelter when the German bombers came up. And you can see it's not that far from the harbour. And they also came out this way, straffing the street as they went out and in fact why don't we let us have a look and listen to my dad telling the story in 1939 I remember quite vividly the uh, beginning of the war because German aeroplanes the bombers used to fly into England via sea and out the same way after dropping the bombs on Tyneside and Wearside. Um, it wasn't a very nice experience because I remember on one occasion the, uh, the German bomber had, uh, was getting rid of his bombs and his ammunition prior to going back to Germany by 
just stuffing the street and dropping bombs on Siam to get rid of them. And uh, we had to run like hell down the front garden to the bottom of the garden where there was an air raid shelter. And that's where we stayed until the bombers had gone. <laughs> 